Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're in section 7.4 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics 2nd Edition. This is where we cover um, the potential fields, V and A, and how they work with electrodynamics. So in the static case, we had the two simple rules that E vector was the uh, gradient of V, and the B vector was the curl of A vector. And the reason why these worked is because the E vector had a curl of zero, and the B vector had a divergence of zero. So the Helmholtz theorem says that, therefore, you can express these as the gradient of some scalar field and as the curl of some vector field. Okay. In the dynamic case, um, we have to check to see if the divergence and the, the curl is still zero. So for the B field, uh, since we don't deal, deal with magnetic monopoles, the the B field rule still holds. So B vector is still equal to the curl of A, since we the divergence of B is zero until we find a magnetic monopole, in which case this goes out the window. For the E field, we have to take into account the fact that um, the E vector depends on the change of the magnetic field. So. Let's run through that math really quick here. So the curl of E, this Faraday's law, is equal to uh, minus the time derivative of V vector. Well, that's just minus the time derivative of the curl of A. And we can distribute that to the A vector, pull it to one side. And so we have the curl of the E vector plus the time derivative of the a vector and that gives us zero and so now we have something where the curl is now zero and so we can use the divergence of v to um, equate this field and I'm going to write this out slightly differently I'm going to say the e vector is equal to minus the divergence of v and then minus this corrective term here so minus d by dta okay hopefully it isn't a mystery how I went from here to here this is basically uh, I'm saying that E plus DTA has to equal this, and so this D by DTA goes to the other side. Okay, so in the static case where A vector isn't changing, this reduces to the electrostatic case as it should. So it's very obviously true. All right, so this is the new equation that is really important. Um, you can memorize it, or you can memorize how to derive it. It's it's a it's pretty you know it's like a one step process pretty much to derive it. Um, when we plug this into Gauss's law, remember Gauss's law says that the uh, divergence of E vector is equal to 1 over epsilon naught of the volume charge density. And of course there's an analog w when you apply the divergence theorem you can have an integral that says the flux of E through some surface is equal to the charge enclosed. The When we plug in for E this, these terms, we get the divergence of the gradient, so the Laplacian of V, and I'm going to switch signs here, so this is going to be equal to negative 1 over epsilon naught rho, and then we take the divergence of this, so he writes it as plus the time derivative of the divergence of A vector, okay, is equal to minus 1 over epsilon naught rho. And this, this is kind of um, a little bit cool because in the absence of an electric field, this time derivative of the A field kind of behaves like an electric field. So it's, in, in some ways you can think of the A field as being an electric field, kind of the anti-time derivative of the electric field. When, it, when the A field's changing, it produces an electric field in the same direction, um, which is what we should expect when we try the next derivation. So for Ampere's law with Maxwell's corrections, we get the curl of B is equal to mu naught j, the current, um, the, the volume current density, minus, or plus, I'm sorry, mu naught epsilon naught, the time derivative of the E vector. Okay. And so if we plug in for B, 
the curl of A, and for E, the negative the gradient of V and the time derivative of A, we can we can collect the terms here. So we're going to get the, the double curl of the A vector is equal to mu naught J plus mu naught epsilon naught uh, time derivative of uh, let's do this negative the gradient of V negative the time derivative of A vector. Okay, so this time derivative is going to apply twice here for the A vector. It's going to be the, the acceleration basically of the A field. Um, using the rule for double crosses, we get that this is actually equal to the gradient of the divergence of A minus the Laplacian squared of the A vector. This is a different kind of Laplacian than this one. This is the scalar Laplacian where you just take uh, d squared by dx of v, d, d, d squared by dy of v, and d squared by dz of, of v. But over here, we're taking d squared by dx of the x component of a in the i hat direction, and then d squared by dy squared of the y component in the j hat direction, and then d squared by dz squared of the z hat, the z component of a in the k hat direction. And that's going to equal um, u naught. Let's distribute these terms out. Minus mu naught epsilon naught um, the divergence or the gradient of the time derivative of V minus mu naught epsilon naught the second time derivative of A vector, the acceleration of the A, really. And we're going to collect all the terms onto one side flip signs, so we're going to get equal to minus mu naught j vector, so we're going to flip signs. And we're going to start with the Laplacian term. We're going to group it with the second time derivative. This guy over here. Okay, and then we're going to subtract out the gradient of a scalar quantity, which would be the divergence of A. This guy right here, sorry, not this guy. This guy's already right there, this guy. And we're going to add in the time derivative of V. Okay. Now this, this is a rather complicated equation. Um, you, you really have three equations. One, one is the X component of J. One is the Y component of J. The third is the Z component of J. And for each component, you have the double position derivative and the double time derivative of A. And then you have to calculate the gradient of this scalar quantity right here. So it's not, uh, it's not trivial. Um, and basically, the rest of the sections, we're going to deal with ways to um, simplify this equation. And um, the... First thing we have to do, though, is we have to cover example 14, which shows you how to put everything together and solve a problem just looking at the potential fields. So thanks for your time. Bye.